We put hundreds of thousands of dollars in it. Uh, personally, the whole team, a million. No, you didn't. Plus, we had no, a, you didn't. an issue with um, CryptoZoo, where our, our, our lead so developer- So this is part three. Uh, if you like this, the make sure you hit that you like button. I'm be doing a lot more reactions. Thanks for all being here. And like held and, it hostage um, for a million dollars. Like, never, really, never smash made. that like button, subscribe yeah, if you want to. This is part three. And a million dollars. Never, you never, literally never paid me. This reporter says Eddie's entire story is fake. fake. Liam. God, this reason it failed. In my opinion. Doug, I'm not the bad guy here. Yeah, yeah. There's some it's hard to, It's hard there. to... Yeah. And I'm, it's not me. Like, I'm here to build. It's hard to pin, like, pin the blame on someone because it's all, like, they're all... Welcome to part three. So far, we've discovered fake orphans. Millions of dollars stolen. And a cast of sleazy characters. That's but what now, I'm saying. Like, they're all sleazy. Put it all together. What is the truth? And who's to blame? We're going to start by going through leaked text messages of the CryptoZoo team to understand all of their motivations. Then we'll go to blockchain evidence and show who sold what. And finally, we'll confront some of the people responsible. But before we can do any of that, let's do it. Call we me. To start in March of 2021, six months before the token even launched. Our four suspects: Logan, Crypto King, Eddie, and Jeff. I don't are like in a group chat discussing CryptoZoo, which starts as a copy of something else. Wow. Quote: I like imitating Crypto Kitties. Jake, the Crypto King, says. Logan replies, I agree. And initially, it wasn't called CryptoZoo at all. It was called Crypto Pets, and they were going to sell a pets token. And pretty early on, it became clear this was all about money, how they were going to sell this thing wow. to investors. In fact, Crypto King said he thought it was worth at least $20 million in only six months, saying the range is insane. 20 to $210 million. I don't like it's them. They're all shady. Wherever we land. Eddie jumped in at this point and talked about how he could sell the project as an investment to a friend, Matt Higgins, saying, quote, he has to spend that $350 million somewhere. Why not us? And Logan says, I love. All right. So it's a lot to take in here. Um, I'll probably edit this out the video, but what? Like, I'm just idea. Crypto King, I'm in. And of course you have Jeff saying, let's, let's go. go. So you can see right there, they wanted to sell this game before it had even launched. It's all money. Now later, Eddie amends the list of investors and says, quote, investors will be Gary V, Todd Morley, James Altucher, Ryan Cavanaugh, and others confirmed on my end. Supposedly they had a hundred million dollars of investment interest. Wow. Now I actually went to some of these investors and asked if this was true. And no. The one person who responded denied it, Ryan Kavanaugh. Quote, nope, not even a little bit. So this looks like it could be yet another lie from Eddie Ibanez, but either way, it looks like there was more issues than just finding investors because the team wanted to pre-sell tokens and not everyone was sure it would be legal. Jake the Crypto King mentions that, quote, if we have a pre-sell, it opens us up to SEC issues. And Jeff agrees and says, don't want to do anything that brings the SEC eyeballs. Mm. Now, not everyone wanted to be so cautious, though. You Logan can tell. Argues, everyone does pre-sale with coins. Eddie agrees. He says, you absolutely can do it. I have the SEC down, private and pre-sale. And honestly, it was quite the dilemma for this team who wanted to you know, know. do a pre-sale, make millions. But, you know, you have these potential legal issues. Don't do it. You make less money. So Crypto King comes up with a middle solution. He says, if we can't sell, no pre-sale. We can still trade them in the liquidity pool. Wow. And this is the start of a new disaster. That's which stealing. Which takes a bit of explaining. Now, just so we're clear, a pre-sale is where you sell investors coins, usually at a discount, before you've launched. And then when you launch, you give them those coins. Now, like I said, the team didn't want to do that. So what they did instead was they bought the tokens on the open market right after launch. But they tried to get clever with it because they didn't actually announce that they were launching this coin at all. They stealth launched it on June 11th and didn't announce this token through Logan until August 18th, meaning they had all that time to silently buy up as much of the supply at a steep discount as they wanted. And the idea here was that doing this, the team could get these tokens extremely cheaply, which is kind of like a presale, but you know, without all the SEC troubles. And Crypto King makes this clear on June 7th when he says, quote, launch of the liquidity pool is where huge money will be made because you get in cheaper. And then says, we, the team, begin buying out the liquidity pool. Once the team has exhausted funds for the liquidity pool buying, we send the contract address to friends, family, investors. 
who want to be able to get in. So obviously the plan is we buy first, then we give it to our close friends and family, and then maybe the public eventually, right? And even the day before, Crypto King reminds everyone, quote, Zoo Day is tomorrow. I highly recommend everyone get a few hundred to a few thousand dollars in Zoo when it goes live. It will likely 10 to a thousand X. So that was their plan. Rather than doing a presale, they were gonna do this stealth launch and hopefully get tokens cheaply the it's same way, up. but without all up. the legal troubles. Or at least that was the plan. Because on stealth launch day, this is where things people first probably started, started buying. People noticed. Team. People bought At it. First, everything seemed to go normal. The team sat in a circle and literally bought it I out. I guarantee as people started but buying the next those day, coins. Crypto King says something odd. Quote: A bot is playing with our token. Kind of cool to watch them work. But he doesn't mention who this bot is. And he also says the asshole finished selling, but doesn't mention who that is. Now, Jeff, Logan's manager, replies upset. He says, how do we prevent someone doing what they just did again? We went from an $130 million to $26 million market cap in two hours. It's not cool to watch. Logan jumps in. Yeah, wait, how did that happen? And he also says, what asshole? How did anyone get this token except for us and none of us sold? And I think actually this is incredibly suspicious because the implication of what Logan's saying is, hey, we tried to scheme this really well. We tried yeah. to all buy this without letting anyone yeah. know. Yeah. How did this, yeah. how did anyone else figure out we were buying it, right? And this is where a fight ensues that's gonna become really interesting. Crypto King deflects the question by saying, my buyer pushed it back up to $40 million. And Logan says, no bro, F your buyer. Explain to me what just happened and how there were 30 token holders. And Jake tries to explain that this was just traders and bots happening to find the token. But Logan says, only five of us knew about it. Jake says, well, many people chase volume and new tokens. And to some extent, he's kind of right. But Logan replies, cap. cap. He doesn't believe it. Quote, I can't be the only one who thinks that's too incredibly convenient. Like someone was tipped off. And, and look, no one's more critical of Logan than me. But as I'm reading these texts, I was kind of like agreeing. Like, it seems like he's yeah, kind of scared. It does seem too nonchalant when somebody's ruining your secret plot. You know what I mean? It seems because sketch, Crypto King sure. was acting very strange. He says, we created $40 million out of thin air. This is a success. Logan replies, this nonchalance worries me. F 40 million, it was at 120 million. Which, That's a big again, fucking difference. It's all about the money with these guys. But truth be told, I did agree that Crypto King's attitude seems strange in these texts. I mean, he's not wrong that bots are a thing. Traders Who is are a Crypto thing. King again? But it sounded like he didn't want anyone to look into it. So naturally, I looked into it. And what I found surprised me because there were bots, but there's also unusual human activity during this time. So I tracked the five biggest buyers of this zoo coin. And lo and behold, this is what I found. Logan was one of the biggest buyers, of which course. is what you'd expect, but he wasn't the biggest. In fact, two of the biggest wallets seem to be associated with Crypto King himself. And here's where I pause. I said, wait a second. Why did this guy buy oh. more zoo tokens than Logan when this is mostly Logan's project? Oh. That kind of, that, that kind of changes that changes a lot of things because I mean shit that basically means that like you knew about it let me write that, write that. so no that means Jake the king like those little bots he was talking about those bots he was talking about like that's him or Logan was one know. of the biggest buyers which is what you'd expect but he wasn't the biggest in fact, two of the biggest wallets seem to be associated with Crypto King himself. And here's where I pause. I said, wait a but second. Why did this point. guy buy more zoo tokens than Logan when this is mostly Logan's project? I thought Crypto King was a small part of this team. And so to get more info on this, I actually got access to an internal meeting note from the day of June 11th, which they called Zoo Day. And in it, we find actually some interesting information. We see that five founders bought in. They apparently were, quote, trading in circles. Five founders brought in trading in circles until each person maxed out. Danny, 20K, Jeff, 100K, 100K, 100K. Until each person maxed out. But on the list of buyers and how much they spend are only four people. When we know five people bought, we have Danny, Logan's assistant for 20K, Logan Paul for 100K, Jeff at 100K, and Eddie at 100K, but Crypto King is nowhere to be found. 
And yet on the blockchain, I have him putting in $200,000 worth. And this number, by the way, seemingly is confirmed in a conversation I had with Crypto King, where he said, my 200K investment. And the reason this is important is because it does imply that something shady was going on the day of the stealth launch. Because Crypto King had a relatively small role in this whole project. He was the advisor, but it wasn't that big of a deal. Like you can see from the internal meeting notes, they have a breakdown of who's getting what in terms of founder tokens. And like Logan Paul's getting 51%, Eddie's getting 30%, Jeff's getting 10%. Jake's only getting 5% of tokens, but he has the most of these like stealth launch tokens, which makes no sense. And it got me thinking that Maybe I'm what explains too. this suspicious behavior around like, oh, don't worry about who was buying at the time of the launch. Maybe that's explained because perhaps no one knew that he was buying up large parts of the token supply. Oh, nobody knew Maybe at all. he was buying it to sell later. Now, of course, that's speculation. So that's why I confronted Crypto King on all of this. But before we get to that call, let's address the elephant in the room. Logan didn't accuse Crypto King of being a scam. It was the other way around. Crypto King told Logan Paul he was a scammer. Oh. And the question is, why? Well, to answer that, we oh. have to go from June, the stealth launch date. That's deflection. Hey, that's like if like you cheated, like you call your girlfriend a cheater. Kinda. To September 1st, the official launch date of CryptoZoo. September 1st, CryptoZoo.co. Now the day of the launch was a bit strange because you might think, well, they already have a token, right? But the first thing they did was actually create a new zoo token with a different code, but the same name. And they actually airdropped all the holders of the first zoo token with an identical amount of those coins on the second zoo token. So you might be wondering why on. did they do that? Well, maybe it's to change the smart contract, but maybe it's because of what they did do they blacklisted some of the holders. In other words, they didn't airdrop to everyone, including Jake the Crypto King. They excluded his wallets so it couldn't get these zoo coins. Jake texts the group about this the next day, saying, quote, this is a major they error this weekend. They chose not to communicate, mint a new token and airdrop it to whatever wallets they determined fit. This decision came from Eddie and Logan and I had no part in it. 11,250 wallets before the airdrop, under 11,000 after. They chose to blacklist and ban on. over 200 wallets. Now, who those wallets are, I have no idea. But he continues, quote, as a founder like Logan, Jeff, Eddie, and Danny, I had purchased a large quantity of tokens. Five plus of my wallets had been blacklisted from the original team's buys. Now, I don't know why he had five, wa five plus wallets there, but okay, okay. He says 80 plus billion zoo tokens were confiscated from me today without any communication. So, wow. That's why Crypto King accused Logan of stealing from him or scamming. It's because he was frozen out of a lot of his wallets. And then we get to the text you guys all know. He says, Logan, you stole $40 million. You're a scammer, you're a con artist, all that stuff. You betrayed your community. The reality is you aren't that guy. And Logan responds, oh, Jake, trust me, bro. I am that guy. Cue in the arms of an angel. And look, I mean, what do we make of this? Well, I, I, I don't know. I can't root for either of these guys because it sounds like Logan stabbed him in the back, but it sounds like Crypto King may have stabbed him in the back in the first place, right? Uh, because it does appear like he bought tokens that maybe everyone They're didn't both in know the wrong. about. So I'm really not a fan of anyone in this situation. And by the way, th this whole thing was structured so misleadingly from the beginning. I, I have to talk to you a bit about it because you might think that these tokens were the only tokens they had, but it's not even true. In the distribution section of Zoo's white paper, they say there's two trillion tokens and a quarter of that are allocated to development, marketing, and founders. Those aren't even the tokens we're talking about right now because they claim that those tokens were locked up for six months and then afterwards, 10% was unlocked every month. And if that's true, there would be no reason for these funds to be blacklisted, right? Why would you blacklist something that would be locked up? True. And the answer is because it wasn't well, the up. founders had more than one set of tokens. Not only did they supposedly have these founder tokens that were locked up and couldn't be sold, these stealth launch tokens were different from that. It's like a whole different thing. And the tokens that they bought, that all of these guys bought, they could sell at basically any time because they weren't locked up, which is a massive problem. And this fact was explicitly laid out in their meeting notes, 
with only one rule. They say, quote, no selling until $200 million market cap and don't impact the market more than 3% and not impact the market more than 10% in a day. And by the way, th like, this is basically conspiracy to manipulate a market. You know, I mean, they have literally all the have an insider rules for how to sell, but we're gonna not even, we're gonna look past that, right? Because me these off. rules eventually kind of changed. A text from Logan's manager, Jeff Levin, came to the group chat, Zoo Founders, saying, guys, new and absolute rules. No one is to sell or transfer any zoo. Logan's gonna make the call when we can make moves. And Logan replies, your tokens do not leave your wallet. This is a game. Now, that all sounds well and good. Don't sell your tokens, don't sell your tokens. But the reality was, I mean, they're just kind of trusting each other because these tokens that they're talking about, they're unlocked, they're not locked up. And they could sell it at any time. And I guess the question on my mind is, is that why Crypto King's tokens were blacklisted? Because they thought he would sell? Or maybe it's just the fact they found out he bought and they didn't know about all those tokens. It's honestly hard to say without knowing more evidence. And this is where we're going to jump into the blockchain. Now, I've tracked the wallets of the entire the blockchain. and identified the largest this seller is a good video by Zoo in the team. And it wasn't Jeff. It wasn't Danny. It wasn't even Logan. It was Crypto King. Crypto King sold, by my calculations, millions of dollars. Ooh. And I know what you're thinking. How's, how's that possible, right? I thought his tokens were blacklisted the day of the official launch. How could he sell that much? Well, the answer is that not all of his tokens were blacklisted. He had even more tokens behind the scenes. And yep. what's he worse, the crypto, king. the crypto Zoo team actually gave him back a lot of his blacklisted tokens, which I guess you can see as a good thing or a bad thing because he then turned around and sold those tokens, right? And from my blockchain analysis across his blacklisted tokens he got back and the tokens that he had scrolled away the whole time, he ended up making six million dollars. That's a good, he that's did a this good payday. By sending out tokens from these larger wallets to dozens of smaller wallets, selling it, and then sending the money to final cash out wallets. So I used those final wallets to calculate the amount he made. Now, I know, look, it's a lot to accuse someone of selling six million dollars nope. in a project that doesn't even you. work. It's a giant scam. So I wanted to give him a chance to defend himself. So I got on a call with Crypto King. And here's what he said when I finally revealed that I knew he had sold. It's gonna change the whole story. Yeah, I'll go on the record for you. And yes, I'm gonna show you the text message that said we can sell at, at these ascending market caps. And literally, I'm gonna, 100%. It sounds like your biggest issue with me is that I sold. And if that's your biggest issue with me, that's the truth. That is a big admission. Selling tokens for a project that you're an advisor on when the project has never been delivered. Although Crypto King insists that it wasn't $6 million and he wasn't trying to rug a project. In fact, you know, really, he might be the one who got screwed over in all of this. Like I did sell, I didn't sell $6 million worth. That's gonna be other wallets, but that's probably not gonna be able to be me being able to be proven, except for them saying, can you send BNB to all these different wallets for me? Which that I'll be able to show you that I was giving BNB to the whole team. I'll also be able to show you that I was a 5% um, holder of the Zoo tokens that I was promised to be given over the three month period was never given. Um, I can also show you that I was frozen out and was never given the 15 billion tokens back that I paid for in cash. So okay. I'll show you all of those things on the record. And then you can also say that I did sell, which is also true. Yep. As long as it's accompanied with, he was a founder that was supposed to be given 5% of the project and was never given the token or paid worked for almost a year on the project. As long as that goes in with it, then at least that tells my side of the story so people understand that it's not like I was trying to rug a project. It's like I put $250,000 into a project plus six months of time, and the founder never did anything he said he was going to do, and then hired a bunch of devs that didn't do what they were going to do, and every time I gave advice, the advice was I was told to fuck off. So it can be that story, or it can be he sold all this amount and he got in early. Well, yeah, that's like 1% of it though. Incredible. He sounds like he views himself as the victim, or at least like Clearly. he got screwed too, which just has to win the gold medal for I me for know. mental gymnastics. Because I mean, he literally had put $200,000 into this and he says he made millions of dollars. Even if you take him at his word that he didn't make the full 6 million, he admits to me later that it might be a pretty close guess. He tells me via text, quote, I don't care if you tell people I sold a few million and leave it at that. 
Well, okay, six million dollars, a few million dollars. It's millions of dollars, right? Millions what? of dollars. That's a lot of money. You only put in two hundred thousand dollars into a project that's never been delivered. Never been doesn't work. Scam cool. people out of their money. Scam your How fans. How is he saying he's the one who's in the wrong? Your own fucking well, fans. In his view, what he did was not wrong. It might have been arguably unethical, but it wasn't illegal. And what Logan did, well, that was illegal. You can say the timing was bad and it was inappropriate to sell, but the reality is I bought tokens open market and sold them open market. So there was nothing illegal about that. Ethically, arguable. The rest that Logan did to me was ethically wrong and illegal. Now, what do I think of all this finger pointing? Well, I think it's pretty wild to try to make yourself look like the lesser of two evils when you made millions of dollars and investors Yeah, what the fuck? Money. I just do. It's easy for now, you to... at the same to... time, I, I want to be fair to Crypto King. He's not the only one who sold here. But I also have to say, not everyone from the founders did sell. For example, Jeff, Logan's manager, to my knowledge, never sold. Neither did Logan Paul, which was a huge surprise. All their wallets that I tracked, you know, held onto their tokens, which is good. And, and to their credit, for a game that doesn't work. But you know who did sell? Eddie Ibanez. The guy who didn't pay the initial devs, the supposed MIT orphan, yeah, I would have sold. From what too. I could see, his initial wallet got a ton of zoo, sent it to a bunch of smaller wallets, and then sold off, kind of like Crypto King. And for my calculations, he made about one point seven million dollars. Ooh, that's now, a good payday. I have to tell you that, like Jake, I tried to confront him and give him the opportunity to defend himself, but he never replied to my emails or my phone calls, and we're just gonna have to leave it there. But we're not done with the money just yet because we still need to talk about the eggs. Remember, we talked about how they profited from ZooCoin, but they also made millions from eggs. According to their own internal meeting notes, they plan to make about $3 million selling these eggs for 0.1 ETH a piece. And that's not far from what I calculated they actually did make, which was about $2.5 million. In the meeting notes, they say they're gonna clear expenses and then do pay. Can I just say that that's fucked up for you to rug your own fans out of millions of dollars for a project that doesn't even work? That is fucked. But pay out who? They don't say. And these expenses are referencing an earlier note suggesting Eddie and Logan had both spent $300,000 each, which I'll say is not a million dollars, but okay, we'll give it to them, right? So they got paid back their 600,000, but where does the rest of the money go? Well, on the Ethereum side, there's one payout for 364,000 to one wallet and another million dollars to another. They both are Coinbase addresses, so we don't know who exactly that is, but clearly someone on the team made a lot of money from these uh, NFT egg sales that do not work. And on the it Binance work. smart chain side, where they also made money selling eggs, the zoo that was spent was supposed to be set aside for 50% to be burned, which they did, but the other 50% was supposed to be allocated for wildlife charities and crypto zoo development. Now, neither seems to have happened because all the money is in a wallet that the team still controls, so there are open questions about you know where that money is going to go and where the Ethereum money went. Did it go to Jake? Did it go to Logan? Did it go to Jeff? Did it go to Eddie? We don't know. But what I know for sure is that no one was innocent, although there's You're certainly shades of guilt you can argue about because, of course, not everyone did sell. You could look at that as the most important thing. Logan Paul didn't sell. Jeff, Logan's manager, didn't sell. I think they're all sell. guilty. And I... But does that make them innocent? Well, I don't think so because they never built a game they promised people. Logan Paul specifically mm. got millions of dollars spent on this game on the promise of the technology promise. that he never built, that his team never built. And he never addressed the failure except to blame Jail his time. developers who weren't paid. And you could say he promised to Jail work backwards time. to fix it, but then never did. But at the same time, it's clearly not just Logan's fault either because there are major team issues, right? You've got Eddie selling millions of dollars of Zoo and then allegedly not paying developers. You've got Jeff, who was warned about Eddie, who kept him on the team anyways. And then after they fired Eddie, seems to also have failed to pay developers on time. And then you've got Crypto King himself, who sold the most, but claims he was the guy who was scammed, which is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. It's just like <laughs> Avengers Assemble for the worst possible team you can imagine to build a crypto gang. And so unsurprisingly, it turns out a lot of these guys backstabbed each other. And so finding a way to wrap this up was difficult because it's hard to assign exact proportions of blame. Because if you focus on any one person, you kind of miss why this project failed. 
CryptoZoo, at the end of the day, did not fail because the price went too low. CryptoZoo failed because they never built a functioning game that they promised. Really, the number one problem, even bigger than people That's selling true. millions of dollars of tokens, was that they never paid the developers on time. As boring as that is. <laughs> and as a result, the investors not only got rugged for millions of dollars, which is a problem, but they just didn't get the core thing they had bought from the beginning, which was not a crypto project. That should be jail time. But something different. I'm excited to launch, uh, to launch my game. You keep using a, and you just did it again, you keep using a word there, game. You're not using like a project. Mike too, get his it's ass too. It's a game. It's a really fun game that makes you money. That's it. That to me is the biggest scam in all of this. Yes, I agree. it's a huge problem. People stole millions of dollars, but it's a symptom of the larger issue, which is people didn't actually care about the game or this, whatever you want to call it. They just cared about the money. And this is ultimately what happens when you have an influencer LARPing as a businessman. It's what happens when you have a liar LARPing as a developer. And it's what happens when you have a shady crypto guru LARPing as a crypto king. You end up with a mess. And in my personal opinion, a fraud as well. And now that this thing blew up in their faces, these four seem to be dodging accountability faster than SBF dodges calls with them. <laughs> because I have reached out to everyone involved, I've tried to get all of their statements on things. So far, no one has taken accountability. I like or the way coffee ended this. Fund the victims at all. They're all hiding, pretending these victims don't even exist. But they do exist. And throughout my investigations, they've been the heartbeat of this whole thing. So. I decided to close this investigations in a bit of a unique way. Rather than me deciding who's to blame or me deciding what you should think, I want to give them the last word. Ooh. Everyone, everyone's to blame. Uh, Logan, in the sense of his, his poor management, is his project. He still made these promises to people. I think everyone is to blame, including Logan Paul, of course, because he was the, the one in charge of this and he was responsible for all the, all of this mess everybody has a, a big part and a massive massive cross to bear each one of them scammed the project in their own way and then and then off off to the sunset they went it was his job to check the team to make sure that everyone is working together to make sure that he is giving the funds of the people that put it into his project under his name to people that he actually trusts. So in my opinion, if the team failed to perform, that's Logan Paul. Logan Paul to blame. The community is destroyed. People is angry. They just want their money back. They just want oh, uh, you can forget about that their uh, normal lives back. Reimburse, reimburse those loyal fans that they have or how to rebuild the project, actually deliver on the projects for those who are still holding their eggs like I am. Those holding the, the yeah, coins. Del so deliver the fucking project. Deliver what they promised, and that would give some redemption to this fiasco. What the fuck? He's not said a word. That's 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 as that's as bad, or almost as bad as taking the money. It's the not coming out and just being a man about it. I think, you know, that guy just made a really good point. You know, it's the not saying nothing and just kind of brushing it off, brushing your fans off, just kind of brushing it off as if nothing happened. When you rug these people, I mean... We deserve to know what was happening behind the scenes while we were waiting for almost a year and a half. The fact that we're hearing this information, not from Logan Ball, but from pretty much an investigator, it really says a lot. What did this loss mean to me? It meant a lot. Me a pop Not card. just personally, because I lost uh, quite a lot of money. My kid and also my my wife were invested. It was like uh, telling a kid that Santa doesn't exist or something like that, because she really believed in all that game. Uh, I mean, you she know, really believed in Logan Paul. Some of Kids these people look up to that kind of people. Tens of so thousands of dollars. it was some kind of broken dream. My mother I got my mom, my mom was Which invested. Which is sad. My sister was also invested, so I mean because my daughter even had to go with the, the eggs and animals. Which the, the loss for them hurts the most because obviously it's just not nice. And they to kinda see. just run off for millions. Win, somebody has to lose. That's a gamble you take whether you get into crypto or not. I got in knowing that I could lose. Which is fine. That's on me. But I thought if I lost something, it would be because I sold at the wrong time. Or 
the game didn't earn as much as I thought it would, and therefore he didn't my even have a chance. Valuable, but I never, you never go into it thinking it's not a, not something that they're going to just sell out from underneath you because they could make so much more if they actually delivered on if what they, they said. Actually even if they delivered on close to what they said. And that's the thing is, you don't think they're going to rug you because there was so much money in a game wallet. Ultimately, at the end, the way I see it is, it, it was fraud. Logan could have could have put out the red flags, told people to stop investing more into it because people were inve- people are still in, were investing to this project mm-hmm. until the le- very last minute, where where the ship was still uh, just just sinking down the ocean, and people were still putting their their cash into it. If I was on a call with Logan Paul. I would ask him, where did his redemption arc go? I think he was on a, such a good streak going about his YouTube career and boxing as well. And it's sad to see that because of money, once again, we have degraded down to stealing from his groups. What would I say to Logan Paul and his team if I could? Well, actually, I, I could because I have an NFT from, uh, from other projects that gives me the right uh, to see Logan Paul, to meet and greet with him. And I will actually use that right uh, to tell him this story again, show him this video in front of me, <laughs> and see how he reacts when he sees that my family, my whole family and my Great video coffee. are affected with this situation. Great video coffee, Zilla. I think that's not human. You would think that Logan would have, would have told his fellow followers, his loyal his loyal fans that hey guys back off red flag things things are things are there's turbulence in the water no not a single not oh a single no he word, kept going nothing he whatsoever. doubled down to market products at children and knowing full well that his team is made up of people that he believes are shady characters here. yeah he still goes on forbes interviews and says the game the game is great for kids it's gonna it's gonna be amazing wow he loves it most kids hmm. their kids love it. our <laughs> developers kids all of them cannot stop playing the game it's not a that's game nice. it doesn't work inhumane the way that that side of it's been marketed knowing what's happened since knowing that all of the people that were there from the beginning like all of the guys that i'd speak to on, um, on a daily basis that we, we've all just got nothing now ideally i just want to say i'll see you in court for real What is he looking at? 